Welcome to Life Words Day by Day. For the believer, in light of our future employment and our present empowerment, we are to be able to handle trivial matters of this life. Listen to what Paul writes to the church at Corinth in chapter 6, beginning in verse 1. When one of you has a grievance against another, does he dare go to the law before the unrighteous instead of the saints? Or do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world is to be judged by you, are you incompetent to try trivial cases? Do you not know that, they're, that we are to judge angels? How much more then matters pertaining to this life? So if you have such cases, why do you lay them before those who have no standing in the church? I say this to your shame. Can it be that there is no one among you wise enough to settle a dispute between the brothers? But brother goes to law against brother and that before unbelievers. We need to take note of Paul's disgust at this point. The first word that Paul pins in the Greek is dare. Dare any of you go to the law when you have a grievance against another brother. Paul begins the sentence this way to show his shock that Christians would act in such a way. You can continue to see his disbelief all the way through verse 9 because in the first nine verses, Paul asks, 10 rhetorical questions, and he makes only two or three declarative statements. When you were a child and you got caught doing something you knew was wrong, did your parents ever start shouting a barrage of questions that they really had no intention of you answering? What were you thinking? How could you be so foolish? What was going in that head of yours? Are you serious right now? Didn't we teach you better than that? When my dad would do that to me, he really wasn't waiting around for me to answer, but rather he was asking those questions out of frustration and to let me know how disappointed he was in me. And this is exactly the same sentiment with Paul at this point. He is frustrated and he is purposefully shaming the Corinthian church. Earlier in chapter 5, he said he was not trying to shame them, but exhort them and admonish them. But now he is shaming them. And he says this exact same thing in verse 5 of chapter 6. I say this to shame you. So we need to understand Paul's tone and concern at this point. This is no trite thing that he's dealing with. And part of his frustration is that the Corinthians seem to have everything in their life in reverse order. They were making decisions based off of worldly wisdom and boasting in it. They refused to exercise discernment and judgment on the incestuous man in chapter 5. But now they were letting the outside world render judgment on inside affairs. So all of this has to do the church refusing to be judgmental and discerning of what is going on within their church. They cast judgment on those outside the church, but they refuse to do anything about sin in their own church, whether it be blatant and of a kind that the outside world deems out of bounds, or even if it was a simple dispute between two members. And they do it all with their spiritual noses turned up. What is the implied expectation that Paul is setting forth here? The implied expectation is that a believer's spiritual position in Christ should have real-time effects in their lives. If you've been placed in Christ by grace through faith, then you are positionally holy. God sees you as holy because you are in Christ. Now, that is your status before God in heaven right now. But we all know the reality for us in this life is not one of perfect holiness. We have not yet attained all that we truly are in Christ. This is the already not yet of the Christian life. We've already been made holy by means of Jesus' eternal and sufficient sacrifice and resurrection. By grace through faith, we embrace and receive that gift. And that reality should change my life today. I make withdrawals on that account. I grow in holiness because I have an infinite supply of it in Christ that is made available to me. Future reality affects present day values. When you pray today, please remember Boris Lebedev and his family, our missionaries in Georgia. And also remember the Safwa LifeWord broadcast that's heard in Tanzania.